Finally, we have hot sheets. This will be the uh, the hot sheet uh, tutorial, how to set up a hot sheet, how to run it, so on and so forth. So in three, two, one. Hi, today's matrix tip and trick is going to be how to set up your hot sheets in matrix. On the matrix homepage, you're going to notice that there's a widget called hot sheets. Now, when we talk about widgets, we're talking about these little boxes on the screen and these little boxes can be moved in different positions depending on where you feel comfortable with having the box. So you can line it up in whatever way you want to, put it wherever you want to. In today's example, I'm just going to kind of move the hot sheets front and center here uh, because maybe I use them a lot and I want them on the top of the page. Now, with hot sheets, you do have to customize them in Matrix. So, in other words, if you're a hot sheet user, you have to tell Matrix where you want your hot sheets to be pulling from. In other words, you have to customize them. Now, with everything else in Matrix, if you take the time to just read the screen and not scan it, many times your answer is in front of you. So here's a perfect example. I find my hot sheet widget, I look at it, and I see the word customize right within that widget. So that would be a pretty, pretty much a good clue to figure out where you're going to do that. So I'm going to click on my customize option, and then I'm going to go to my hot sheet management section. Notice you've got all your property types here. Let's go with the residential hot sheet as, a, as the example today. So we're going to choose that particular property type. And then we're going to move over to the right and we're going to see the options for us here. Now we can move it up or down, which doesn't have anything to do with customizing it. Adding has nothing to do with customizing it. Neither does renaming it, nor reset criteria or delete. So by process of elimination, the only thing that really makes sense here is to edit the criteria, which means we're going to create the criteria our hot sheet is going to use. So choose the property type, go to edit criteria, and then you're presented with your search form, just like when you do a normal search in matrix. You can fill in your search criteria based on, you know, whatever you want. If you want your Tulsa uh, search uh, uh, hot sheet to be looking for the Tulsa School District, you know, choose the Tulsa School District or whatever criteria you want. You can also do a map search if you prefer to have your hot sheet focus on areas that you have drawn out, again, versus a specific predefined geographic area. So you go through and you just Basically, tell the hot sheet where you want your hot sheets to be coming from. Again, in this case, we'll do the Tulsa School District. Maybe I just want to focus on houses or any other subtypes. And then across the top on the left, you're going to see the different statuses or change types that you want to see. So my goal is to look for new listings. I want to see properties that came back on the market, had price decreases, and maybe properties that have expired. Again, that's my choice. Your choice more be, may be different than that. Now, keep in mind in Matrix, when you're choosing multiple options from a change type box or a sub property type or a school district, remember you do have to hold the control key or the command key down to make multiple options stick. And once again, if you forget that, you can always hover over the question mark and it will remind you of that option. So, in my example here, uh, I chose the Tulsa School District, the change types, and the property subtype. There's really nothing more to do except go to the bottom of the page and look at your three options. Clear erases everything on the page. Don't want to do that. Cancel. Don't want to do that. So the only logical choice then is after you've made your selections is to simply save it. Once you save it, your hot sheet now has been customized and you get the, the flag or the banner across the top telling you that's been done. If desired, you can then go to another property type and go back to edit criteria and wash, rinse, and repeat as you need to. Now you can also go to the add option and you can choose a particular property type and you can create your own custom hot sheets under that particular property type. So you're not just limited to the the property types having one hot sheet under a property type. You can have a more or less another hot sheet under a property type and you know create your own uh, custom hot sheets, if you will. So that's another option for you. So again, you're not just limited to the couple you see here. You can add more to that if you want to. The key here is after you have created your hot sheets, make sure you click the done option at the bottom of the screen. If you don't, it's not going to save the hot sheet. So now I've gone in and I've created my residential hot sheet.
Then I can choose what time frame I want to go back in and look at the data from. And you can see you've got some different options here. Uh, anything from new only to seven days to custom. If you do use the custom option and click on your hot sheet property type that you're going to run, you can specify a particular date or you can actually specify a particular time range for today that you want to see that information from. So it really lets you get down into uh, the level of detail that you may need to see. I'm just going to go back and say I want to see the past 24 hours. So I choose that option, click on the property type that I just customized my hot sheet for, and there is my hot sheet showing me the 34 properties that are visible that ran in today's hot sheet. With a hot sheet, the big difference is there's two additional columns. There's a change type and a change info column. Change type, based on the change types that I picked, new listings, back on markets, price decreases, it clearly defines that. And then if there's information in that change type, like back on market went from pending to active, price decrease went from this price to that price that all appears and if i jump to the next page uh, again there's actually a price increase there and then pending and expired so now i'm just back to a normal search in matrix i then click on my mls number take a look at the property decide if that's a property that i would like to utilize for my client or customer and if it is i select the ones that i want to use Go to my action bar down on the bottom. There's my email option. There's my print option. There's my driving directions. So we're really just back to the same thing that we get to if we run a normal search. We just got there through the context of a hot sheet. So again, from your hot sheets, find the widget, put it where you want to, click customize, customize the property type for your hot sheet, create your own custom hot sheets. And then when you save them, choose how far back in time you want to go, and then just click on the property type to execute your hot sheet. And from there again, it's just the normal matrix workflow. Everything is the same, except it comes from a hot sheet. And that's today's matrix tip and trick on hot sheets.